Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You will be listening to the Word of God from Reverend Wisdom Dafiamapo, Senior Pastor of Grace Chapel International, Mataheko. He delivers to you the incorruptible Word of God with clarity and anointing. He yeah. says in Deuteronomy 8.18 that remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you what? Power to get wealth. And one of the meaning of that word power is that He gives you ideas. You came to my rescue. Almighty God will bring enlargement into your life. It's a time to think big and have a big vision because your God is the God of enlargement. up your hands and declare that everything is working for my good. Declare it like a believer that all things are working for your good. Even the mistakes that you have made in life, God is so big that he is able to use your mistakes and make everything work for your good. Hallelujah. If that is the faith in your heart, turn around, tell three people, everything is working for my good. I am intentional about this. I am intentional about this. I will not be sorrowing I will not live a life of regret. God is turning everything for my good. Hallelujah. You may be seated. That's a message in itself we could preach this morning and get ourselves rejoicing. That mistakes or no mistakes, everything is working out for my good. Amen. But this month of February, we are refreshing ourselves in the vision of the house. We're talking about the vision of this house. The vision that inspired the setting up of this house. And for that matter, anyone who considers himself or herself a member of Grace Chapel, you must buy into this vision and you must live this vision. Amen. God gives a vision for a purpose. As we've been seeing since uh, getting to the end of last year, and we've been preaching why God asked Moses to send 10 spies into the promised land to come back and tell them how the land is like or was like. It was to give them a vision. Even Joshua, before they could cross the river Jordan, he also sent spies to the same promised land. It was for the purpose of coming back to give the people vision, to describe to them vision. God says, without a vision, a man living in this world will perish because he will cast off restraint and move in every direction. And so we've been stressing the fact that you must have a vision for your life and you must live a vision. Beyond that, Grace Chapel itself, Grace Chapel, the church you belong to, there is a vision for this house. Can I hear the church shout a big amen? amen. There is a vision for this house and every member of this church you must leave the vision. Last Sunday, we saw from the scriptures uh, the text which inspired this vision from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I don't intend going through that, but when we recap some of the things we shared, 
Paul was very emphatic. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 17 to 20, Paul announced that God reconciled us to himself. God reconciled us to himself. And so, when you come to Grace Chapel, when you come to this house here, the first thing we plead with you is that be reconciled to God. Don't just come here and walk out without reconciliation with God. You must be reconciled as a person. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 tells us that uh, before we came to Christ, we were alienated. We were aliens to God. It's like God didn't know us. You will say, what? I was an alien? Yes. If I wasn't born again, then I was an alien. Didn't God create me? Well, he set up the creation process in motion when your father and your mother met. But if you're not living in relationship with him, then what are you? You are an alien. And more so, he said, in our mind, our thought, our thinking pattern tended to do works which are very wicked in the sight of God. But now, but now, but now, God has reconciled us to himself. Everybody shout out the word reconcile. Through Jesus Christ. In the text we read, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I think verse 19, he said, God was in Christ, reconciling the whole world unto himself. And listen to this. This is the good news. He said, not imputing their trespasses. The word imputing means not accounting, not keeping record of your trespasses, the sins you committed, your transgressions, God, God, Jesus, to die on the cross, cross, shed his blood so that all your trespasses against him can be wiped out. And then after that, he embraces you and says, you are my beloved child. That is reconciliation. Amen? Then we also had, after that reconciliation, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So as you are seated here, you have a ministry, ministry of reconciliation. It is your pleasant duty to also introduce other people around you to come and have this reconciliation with God. That's why in Grace Chapel we said our vision is winning souls for his kingdom. We are to go and give the message of reconciliation. And he says, he has given us the word of reconciliation. So we have a message. We are to tell people, hey, when Jesus Christ came into the world, that was God himself wrapped in human flesh. Why did he come? Simply to reconcile you. Simply to pay for your sins. Simply to make sure that you come back to him without you doing anything, but just believing in him and accepting what he has done for you. Say a big amen to that. Yeah. So we have a message. What message do we have? Reconciliation. If you listen to me, you will be reconciled to God. But if you don't listen to us, you will continue living like the enemies of God. So you are very important in the order of things because of the word he has given you. Therefore, you should not keep silent. You should not keep quiet. Wherever you are, you should proclaim the word of reconciliation to the world around you, in your office, in your house, in the marketplace, in every place, after God has reconciled you, he gave you a ministry and committed into your hands the word of reconciliation. You have an important message to give. You have a news for the world, for the dying world. 
you have the good news. Say amen. amen. We went on to see who God made us. The second Corinthians 5, 20. After he has reconciled us, he says we are now ambassadors for Christ. We are now, come on, let me hear you use that word. Ambassadors. And that is the vision for this house. That when you come here, we minister to you. When you go out, you are going out as what? An ambassador for Christ. An ambassador. An ambassador. And you are representing which country? Uh, the country of heaven. So this earth is no more your home. Let me show you the country where you come from. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, quickly. For our citizenship is in heaven. After you have been reconciled to God, you are now a citizen of heaven. So what are you doing here? You are an ambassador on the earth. You are an ambassador. Letting the people know how heavenly life operates. Letting people know how the kingdom of God is operating. So your life becomes an open book. As you go from here, you are an ambassador. Ambassador not of Grace Chapel, but ambassador for Christ himself. Hallelujah. That is the vision for this house. That every member you are involved in reconciling the world. When I say the world, I don't even mean from Alaska to Australia. That's the geographical world. Okay? When I say the world, eh, where you live, the people around you, your circle of friends, your family, where you interact with people, on day-to-day -day basis. That is your world. Okay? The people there. So God has planted you there with people around you. So you are an ambassador of heaven to them. You have to tell them how heavenly life is. Not only the honey and the milk, but it starts with reconciliation with God. That in this week, you must proclaim God's message of reconciliation to somebody in your world. Somebody in your world must hear that God has already come, He's already done the work on the cross, so be ye reconciled to Him. Amen? And we say, everyone in Grace Chapel, this year, it should be your target and goal that every month you will bring somebody to Christ. That makes it how many people in the year? Twelve people. Everyone. Twelve. Set it as your goal. That God is keeping you alive in 2018 for the purposes of bringing twelve people into his kingdom. And for that matter, into the church as well. Even when you go home, you can write down the names of those 12 people. The people around you, in your world, who do not know Christ yet. I continue today from Ezekiel chapter 33. From verse 1, we see this one actually is under the Old Testament, but it relates to us. And God spoke to the house of Israel, and he spoke to the prophet is, uh, is, uh, Ezekiel. One of the things he told both of them, he told the house of Israel through the prophet, and he told the prophet separately, is that now I have made you a watchman. I have made you a watchman. A watchman over your world. A watchman over the people around you. 
So let me read the text for today. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, when I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. Listen carefully. Now the people, they have taken a man and they are making the man to be the watchman. Let's see the responsibilities of a watchman. If when he sees the sword coming upon the land, and if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet and the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity by his blood, I will require at the watchman's hand. Is that fair? Is that fair? Is that fair? I want you to uh, know clearly before we start saying God has made you a watchman. He says, if you don't warn the people of the impending danger and they, out of ignorance, eventually end up in a place where they lose their life, God says, you, the watchman, I will come and require his blood from your hand. So it's a very serious thing to be a watchman. If that be the case, then I don't need to be a watchman in order to be safe. But let me read on. Verse 7. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, as a watchman, first... You shall hear a word from my mouth. When you come to church, what are you doing? You are hearing the word of God from his mouth. If the preacher is properly connected to him, God is speaking through the preacher. So when you come to the house, you are hearing the word. And he said, and warn them for me warn the people of the impending danger. God says, warn them for me. Last Sunday, I say he has made you ambassador. But today, he's using another pictorial word to describe who you are and what you should live for. And he said, I have, he called, this one he was telling Ezekiel, but I'm submitting to you. He's telling all of us today. The son of man, I have made you a watchman. When you come here, hear the word from my mouth and go and warn them. Verse 8, when I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die. Let me put it in today's English. When I say to the sinner, O sinner man, or let me make it easy for you. When I say to the one who is lost, still, let me use an IV. <laughs> when I say to the one who is not yet saved, oh, unsaved man, you shall surely die. And you do not go to speak to one, the unsaved man from his way. That unsaved person shall die. In his iniquity, but his blood I will come to require at your hand or from your hand. I will say the person has gone to hell with all that you know and with all that I have done for you. Why didn't you get that person? 
to receive salvation and also be reconciled to God. So that person will, will not only be lost, but I will ask of his blood from you. Tell the person sitting next to you, there's a day of accounting. Tell him, there's a day of accounting. The New Testament calls it the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, let's read on. I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you are faithful, if you go on evangelism, if you share the message of reconciliation and one the unsaved soul to turn from his way and come and receive salvation and he doesn't turn from his way he shall die in his iniquity but you have delivered your soul his blood will not be asked from you verse 10 therefore you O son of man say to the house of Israel does you say if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us and we pine away in them, how can we then live? You know, people say that today. People you are witnessing to them, they can say all kinds of things. They will be arguing with you. They will be arguing. They will bring all kinds. So what do you do? You patiently sit with them and you proclaim the gospel to them. So verse 11 says, say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked or the sinner or the lost, but that the wicked should turn from his way and live. Turn! Turn from your sinful way. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Today, become a watchman. Amen. Become a watchman. Become a watchman over your world and warn them with the gospel message. Because God says, as I live, it's not my pleasure to see the lost going to hell. It's not my pleasure. Why is he saying it's not my pleasure? Because Jesus Christ has already come. He's already paid the price. He's already shed his blood from the cross. And now all that a person needs to do to receive salvation is to believe in him. And the blood of Jesus will cleanse every sin from us and reconcile us with the Father. Now, if a person continues to refuse, look at what will happen. Matthew chapter 25. Go to 35. Let me start from verse 35. For I was hungry. Here he was talking about social work. But let me show you the destination. Destination of the one who is still an enemy to God. Where the person is ending. Why he is making you a watchman. Okay? Why this matter is serious. Or another motivation for you to go and evangelize. He said, for I was hungry. You gave me food. I was thirsty. And you gave me drink. I was a stranger. And you took me in. I was naked. And you clothed me. I was sick. And you visited me. I was in prison. And you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him. You see that word there, righteous? When a person becomes saved, what happens to him? He becomes the righteousness of God. He receives righteousness as a gift. That's another message of, or another meaning of the reconciliation. When you are reconciled to God, God considers you righteous. You have a right standing within. You have access into his kingdom. Not because of what you have done. Huh? but because of what Jesus has done and you have accepted that he did it for you. He gives you his righteousness. So in this world, you have two types of people, the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, he, then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? 
or thirsty and give you drink. Come on. When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer them and say, Assuredly, as I, I, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of these, one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Verse 41. That, this is where I'm coming to. So everyone, join me. Let's read this verse together. Ready, go. Then, he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire. Prepared for... Ah, let's read. Read again like you have taken breakfast this morning. Ready, go. Then, he will also say, to those on the left, depart from me. Ah. As the person sitting next to you, where is your destination? Where is your destination? In eternity, where is your destination? As the person sitting ne next to you, okay, tell him, I don't know what destination means. What's the destination? Then explain to him, destination is where you are going after this life, after death. Okay? So Jesus says, how many people are there? On the right, who are the people there? Righteous. On the left, who are the people? Unrighteous. What does he say to the righteous? He blesses them. What does he say to those who are not righteous? It said, depart from me. To where? To where? To where? Everlasting fire. My friend, those around you who have not yet received the gift of righteousness from Jesus Christ, if they die in their sins, where are they going to? Everlasting fire. When you go and you are warning somebody that uh, don't go to everlasting fire, receive Jesus and be saved. He will say, ah, if God is a loving God, why will he prepare everlasting fire for me? Have you heard that story before? Yes. Several times. If he's a loving God, why will he send people to hell? So let's read that verse again. Ready, go. Then he will also say, to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cast into the everlasting fire, prepared for who? And you see that God has not prepared the fire for any human being, but human being will end there. Why? Why will they end there? Because the warning, if they don't heed the warning, if they don't receive, and if nobody goes to warn them, if nobody goes to warn them, sister, this is the vision for this house, that we are ambassadors for Christ, and we are watchmen. And if there are people around us who are not saved, God is expecting you to go and warn them. He's expecting you to be the trumpet over there. He's expecting you not to be comfortable and just relate to your friends who are not yet saved as if there is nothing at stake. There is a future. There is a destination. There are two types of destination. One of it, he calls it everlasting fire. And amazingly, God didn't prepare it for any human being. He prepared it for who? The for the devil and the devil's angel. So, carry the burden. That brother, sister, don't end there. That place was prepared for the devil. The vision for this house is to turn everybody into what God says we are after he has reconciled us. Number one, he said, you are an ambassador for Christ. With your life as an open book in your world. 
And he says, as if God is pleading through us, turning the world, be ye reconciled. Because Jesus has paid the price. Don't wait for another day. You don't know when you will be called. If you don't believe, go and ask Ebony. That you don't know, even when you are told before. Hey, so when the message comes to you today, don't postpone it. Don't wait. Because when it comes to that departure time, okay, somebody say, we need the mercy of God. Hallelujah. So in Great Chapel, I want everybody to carry the burden. Look, look at verse 46 of Matthew 25. It says, again, these, the same people, they will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Everlasting punishment. Everlasting. So, that your friend, your brother, your sister, the friend whom you chat with, the friend whom you eat with, the friend whom you watch football with, if he's not born again, he will end up in a lake of fire, everlasting punishment. He will be burning. In another place, Jesus said, in the outer darkness, where there is the gnashing of teeth, the gnashing of teeth, regretting, the person is regretting. Oh, I regret, I regret. I wish I had accepted Christ. I wish I had accepted Christ. Oh, Dress Chapel was just nearby. I wish I had gone there. I wish I had gone to church. I wish I had listened to the message. That is why Jesus said they will be in a place where they are gnashing their teeth in regret because the opportunity has passed. Let me believe that all of you here, you are born again, are you? But if there is somebody here who is not born again, today is the day of your salvation. Not for your grace. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Truth Table with Reverend Wisdom Dafia Makbo of Grace Chapel International. We believe you've been blessed even as you have listened. For copies of this message, visit the Grace Bookshop at Grace Chapel International Auditorium, First Light, or call 244 840 and 207 9000 And remember to always walk in his amazing grace.